now on Cooks TV News. It's a frosty start to February. Temperatures beginning in the 20s and 30s this morning. The sun returns today and not as chilly as it has been. Plus more sun for the weekend. I'll have the details coming up. A pivotal update on legislation in the Maryland General Assembly. The potential changes in girls high school sports and what it could mean for transgender athletes. Lewis Water Woes will show you how one neighborhood is tackling troubling waters, their response to bacterial threats and flooding risks. Capitol Hill Clash, the CEOs of social media companies faced a grilling, how their responses could reshape the digital landscape and protect your families. This is Coast TV News Today. It is Thursday, February 1st, 2024. Good morning, I'm Matt Pensick and Paige Marley has the morning off. Thank you for being up with us during this five o'clock hour and we're taking you live now to Lewis and we're going to go right to first alert meteorologist Bob Trihe, who has his very first forecast in the month of February. Exciting there. Good morning, Bob. It is exciting, Matt. Maybe if, uh, you know, if you don't like scraping frost, it's not so exciting. Well, you know, but hey, that means the stars are out. So we're finally clearing some of those clouds out. It is a frosty start out there. 28 in Georgetown, 27 in Del Mar. These are the coolest temperatures we've seen in a while. 28 Milton and really much of the coast is below freezing at this hour, too. Uh, the good news is the winds are calm, but when we have calm winds and mainly clear skies, that is conducive to that frost. So you'll be scraping for a little while as a lot of the uh, disturbed weather has moved offshore. We've got weak high pressure in place and visibility now about 10 miles, but do watch out for areas of patchy fog as temperatures are near freezing at seven by nine. We're in the upper 30s. I think we could see a few more clouds mixed in by noon into the mid 40s and then we're into the low 50s. How about that to kick off the month of February and maybe a few more clouds into the evening hours. So we begin in the 20s and top out near 50 degrees. A few showers for Friday, then a good look weekend. I'll have much more on your first week of February forecast coming up. Well, we got an update on the story we first brought to you on Wednesday. Maryland lawmakers introduced House Bill 47. It's called the Fairness in Girls Sports Act and what it would do, it would ban transgendered athletes from participating in girls high school sports. Lower Shore State Senator Mary Beth Carosa co-filed the bill in that chamber. Three separate categories, boys, girls, and co-educational or mixed teams would be created. The bill did pass its first reading in the House and has been sent to the Ways and Means Committee. If ultimately approved and signed into law, it would take effect on July 1st. One neighborhood in Lewis is dealing with waters, troubling waters, and well, now there are concerns that the issues in the Kindleton development are being ignored. One neighbor we spoke with says he has reached out several times to the housing development managers and also the Sussex County Conservation and more. But he says nothing's been done and he has lots of concerns for bacteria, flooding and other things. Other people told Coast TV that whenever it rains, it can take weeks for the water to drain. It was properly graded. You wouldn't have these problems behind your property um, like that. And uh, it just it's kind of it's kind of depressing and upsetting. We moved to Delaware to retire and, you know, nothing's being done to correct the, the situation. Now, we did reach out to Lennar, who manages the property, and we were told they'll be providing us with a statement at a later point in time. Got an update on the story that we've been covering for nearly a year. The student at the center of a lawsuit against Sussex Central High School and its leaders has plans to refile her case. It was earlier this week the Delaware Superior Court granted a motion to dismiss the lawsuit, saying the district and school were not responsible for the actions of the administrators Anaya Harmon was suing for. So let's clarify. Harmon's lawsuit still stands against her former principal and assistant principal. And in a statement, Harmon's attorney tells Coast TV News, quote, Ms. Harmon and her family are anxiously awaiting a decision on criminal charges against Bradley Layfield and Matt Jones for what they are calling outrageous behavior towards this son, stunt student. Layfield's attorney, Thomas Neuberger, previously told Coast TV News that the lawsuit was misdirected at his client who he says only shared a school fight video out of concern for safety and had no part in creating or circulating a meme from it. Now, this all began on May 17th last year. That's when Harmon's breast was exposed during a school fight and surveillance video was shared uncensored. On May 22nd, the district placed Sussex Central High School staff members on administrative leave and Delaware State Police launched a criminal investigation at the school later that week. On September 11th, Harmon filed a lawsuit against the school district, Layfield and Jones, 
claiming that a meme of was made and shared amongst faculty members. Layfield received notice of his termination on November 20th. Now, we reached out to the Indian River School District when the lawsuit against the district was dismissed, but still have not heard back. New today, an update on the Millsboro Bypass. Officials from DelDOT will be at the Towns Library next Wednesday to answer questions about the progress of road work. Ground was broken last April for the long-awaited construction. This will create a two-lane road between Route 113 and 24. Construction is expected to be completed sometime in 2025. While continuing with DelDOT, it is seeking public input on the proposed widening and intersection improvements along Route 9. This is in the Lewis area. They say this will improve traffic operation. DelDOT says intersection improvements are proposed at the existing Kings Highway intersections with Dartmouth Drive, Clay Road, Gills Neck Road, and Freeman Highway, along with adding a new intersection between Gills Neck Road and Freeman Highway. This workshop will be held on February 20th at Cape Henlopen High School from 4 to 7 p.m. Got developing news in eastern Sussex County. The Cape Henlopen School Board voted unanimously to hold a referendum that will ask locals to pay as much as up to $150 a year for an average home. This includes acquiring 102 acres of property, a new district office, a transportation facility, indoor pool, and current expenses. The district superintendent says the increase is necessary to keep up with a growing population. Since 2018, we have 950 more students in the district, almost 1,000 more students, and we've hired over 100 additional staff members during that time period. Um, so that is the main reason. We, you know, we have student needs, we have staff needs, we're growing. And the referendum that will determine whether or not property tax increases will happen, it is scheduled for Tuesday, March 26th. This brings us to our Coast TV poll. We want to know which areas of education should receive top priority in funding through school taxes. So let's take a look at the updated results. And so far, 47% say that money should go to teacher salary. Close behind that, classroom resources. And we have a couple votes for infrastructure and technology. If you haven't voted yet, you can still do so at coasttv.com or on our mobile app. Now, the Democrat has announced a run for Delaware's District 14 House seat. Claire Schneider Hall is a former executive director of the liberal advocacy group Common Cause Delaware. This district covers Rehoboth Beach, Lewis, and Dewey Beach, and is currently held by fellow Democrat Pete Schwarzkopf, who last year announced he was retiring. The commissioner of the Delaware Human and Civil Rights Commission, Marty Rendon, is also running on the Democrat side. Primary in the state is scheduled for September 10th. Slaughter Beach in Milford now teaming up to find a safer way for pedestrian cyclists and mobility restricted riders to travel between them across Route 1. The Milford Slaughter Beach project aims to improve access to both the beach and employment opportunities in Milford. It also is looking to promote shopping and eating out in Milford and add educational opportunities on Slaughter Beach's ecosystem. Town and city are currently working on the grant application process. Demolition on the road with Beach Patrol broke ground this week, but not without some debate. Uh, the city says the new 5,500 square foot building will include state of the art facilities for both the Rehoboth Beach Patrol and visitors. The current Beach Patrol was visibly outdated from the outside, but so were the conditions inside. And one local we spoke with tells Coast TV that she worries how a modern building could change the area. I would like to preserve some of the old charm of Rehoboth. It, it has changed a lot, and I understand progress, but it's important to integrate tradition with the new progress and try to maintain some of the old character and charm of small, charming Rehoboth Beach. Other people who spoke with Coast TV are excited about the building because they believe this corner of the boardwalk needs an update. Until a new building is completed and open, the Beach Patrol will operate out of a trailer in downtown Rehoboth Beach. Well, the CEOs of five major social media companies appeared before the Senate Judiciary Committee on Capitol Hill yesterday. Lawmakers held the CEOs to account for rampant sexual exploitation and drug trafficking across their platforms, which they say are having detrimental effects on children. Family members who lost loved ones due to the harmful impact of social media we're in the audience, holding photos and calling on the tech giants and lawmakers for accountability. NBC's Drew Petromo has the latest from Washington. 
Inside the hearing, family members holding pictures of children they say were harmed by social media, and they were backed up by senators fuming at company CEOs. We are uh, here in this hearing um, because as a collective, your platforms really suck. Senators telling the leaders of Meta, TikTok, Snapchat, X, and Discord their platforms are frequently used by cartels to sell drugs and for child exploitation. Mr. Guffey's son uh, got caught up in a sex extortion ring in Nigeria using Instagram. And he was uh, shaken down, paid money, that wasn't enough, and he killed himself uh, using Instagram. What would you like to say to him? Well, it's terrible. I mean, no one should have to go through something like that. The CEOs repeatedly touting what they say are major investments aimed at protecting children. Safety is one of the core priorities that defines TikTok under my leadership. Safety is built into everything we do. As a mother, this is personal. It's double talk, double talk. But senators say social media companies are not doing enough, accusing them of putting profits ahead of safety. The problem is we've been working on this. Senator Welch is over there. We've been working on this stuff for a decade. You have an army of lawyers and lobbyists that have fought us on this every step of the way. The senators are pushing a slew of reforms, including opening up the platforms to lawsuits on behalf of users who say they've been harmed. Drew Petromo, NBC News, Washington. At one point, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg apologized to the families in the hearing room, saying he was sorry for everything they've been through. Families say that's not enough, and they continue to push for more regulation of the social media companies. Well, we're just getting started on this edition of Coast TV News Today. Coming up, a new fight against erosion at the Ocean Pines Yacht Club. Also, record-breaking spending this Valentine's. See how $14 billion will be shelled out and the surprising shift in gift trends. And the Indian River Board of Education's quest for new voices, the vacancies that need to be filled on its governing body. Coast TV News Today is back after this. With all the choices of services around Elmarva, where do you even begin? Trust experts of various fields, including Kitchen Concepts Plus, Chesapeake Ice Center, Apple Discount Drugs, FLC Energy, Spicer Brothers Construction, Mattress Peddlers, Homewell Care Services, Robinson's Jewelry and Coin Shop, Delmarva Acupuncture and Wellness Center, Mast Audiology Services, Riptide Restoration, Active Pest Solutions, Delmarva Day, and Buchanan Subaru. Visit DelmarvaExperts.com for various local professionals offering the best of Delmarva. Delmarva Experts, local experts right when you need them. Truly amazing. Of course, that's why he is on my dream team. Are you ready? That was fantastic. I'm so jealous. Even though you haven't got the best mentor, at least look, we're here. Yeah. Let's see what your mentoring has done. I actually got quite emotional. Can you just shut up? AGT Fantasy League, Monday on NBC and Peacock. Coming up this week on the Delmarva Home Show. We're touring a townhome in Rehoboth Beach. This home features granite countertops and a pond view. We're also checking out a condo at the Key in Ocean City. This home includes tile floors, granite countertops, and is the perfect vacation home or rental investment. You can watch the Delmarva Home Show on Sundays at 11.30 a.m. on WBOC. Keep up with local sports all from One App. From your mobile device to Fire Stick, Roku, and Apple TV. Download the DSN app today. Driven by Preston Automotive Group. 514 on this frosty February morning. Here's our Bennett Termite camera at the Art League of OC. You can see the stars maybe not as frosty at the beach with 35 degrees, but inland, a different story, middle to upper 20. So we've got the heavy frost with mainly clear skies. At least the winds are light, so we're not looking at a big wind chill, but mainly clear skies as the bulk of those clouds have moved offshore from yesterday. And we have weak high pressure in place, and that will provide a nice day. But for the kiddos at the bus stop, watch out for air 
areas of patchy fog. 28 out the door on this frosty morning and then heading home. I think we'll see more sunshine, not as cold and temperature of 47. The Indian River Board of Education says it needs candidates to fill two vacant seats in District 1 through June 30th. The district says interested candidates should contact Superintendent Jay Owens or Jennifer Troublefeld. Candidates should submit a filing form and letter of interest by 4 p.m. on February 16th. Moving to Millville, homeowners there who are looking to get into the political scene. There are a pair of town council seats open for the election that is being held on March 2nd. If you haven't submitted your forms yet, you're running out of time. Those forms are due tomorrow at 4.30 p.m. Well, according to the National Retail Federation, Valentine's Day spending is expected to reach over $14 billion. That would be a record. The organization says it is expecting to see a shift in spending for certain gifts this year, including flowers, clothing, jewelry, and that night out. Based on trends, 2024 is expected to be the second most expensive Valentine's Day in the past 10 years, with 2020 being the highest at $27.4 billion. The average couple spends about $180 each Valentine's Day or leading up to that special day. Well, speaking of that color, red versus white team uniforms for the upcoming Super Bowl have been revealed on social media. And the Kansas City Chiefs are serving as the designated home team in the February 11th game in Las Vegas. That's because the NFC and AFC alternate each year as the home conference for the big game. So it means the Chiefs get to choose first when it comes to uniforms. And they reveal they will wear the team's home red uniform. And then the 49ers that we're seeing right here, they will wear their traditional road white jerseys. Choices mean the Chiefs and 49ers will wear the same jerseys they did when they faced off four years ago in the same Super Bowl matchup. Coming up, learn about the innovative natural methods being used to combat erosion at the Ocean Pines Yacht Club and how this restoration project looks to benefit sea life, shorebirds, and the local community. And we're seeing starry skies on this frosty morning. Hershey Exteriors Cam 35 at Ocean City right now. Temperatures in the 20s and 30s this morning. We're finally seeing some sun this first day of February, a little bit later on. Slightly warmer temperatures today and a nice looking weekend. Some showers thrown in in between. I'll break it down coming up. At Draper Media, we offer more than TV and radio advertising. We reach your customers wherever they are, at the gas pump, in bars and restaurants, driving around Delmarva, in a taxi or rideshare at the beach, on social media, or searching for products and services, checking their email, and listening to podcasts or streaming video. Let our team build a plan that best fits your business. Email Frank Hamilton today. Today on Coast Life, discover the Southern Delaware's Chorale Celebration of Black History Month with diverse chorale music. Also, Heart Mumps, Healthy Heart Tips, and a Wedding Phone Emergency in Spill the Tea. Today at 4 on Coast TV. Welcome to the Ride Home on Coast Country 103.9 and 106.3. First rule of the Ride Home, we definitely talk about the Ride Home. In fact, tell all your friends. Second rule of the Ride Home, we have fun. Top 10 Tuesday, Would You Rather Wednesday, and every day, you pick the songs on the high five. And the third rule of the Ride Home, we don't take ourselves too seriously. You've got enough to stress about, so let me handle the ride home weekdays from 3 to 7 on Coast Country 103.9 and 106.3. Take the DSN app with you wherever you go and never miss a game from your favorite local team. Whether you're on the road, stuck at the office, or out with friends and family, the DSN app notifies you when your team is on live so you can watch the game as it happens or watch videos on demand. Keep up with local sports all from one app. From your mobile device to Fire Stick, Roku, and Apple TV, download the DSN app today, driven by Preston Automotive Group. Get the Coast TV First Alert weather app with live satellite and radar, severe weather alerts, and extended forecast. Download the free Coast TV First Alert weather app, brought to you by Paul Davis Restoration and Home Remodeling. All right, it's 519 AM on this Thursday morning in the middle of your screen. We are giving you a live look at Ocean City and boy, Bob, in these early hours of the morning, people should be prepared to get that scraper out if they're hitting the road soon. Yes, I would think so. I 
peered outside this morning, man, I said, ooh, look at all those stars, and ooh, look at all that frost on the cars. So it is going to be a little frosty out there this morning. Make sure you scan the QR code as well before you scrape your car and download the Coast TV weather app, and it's going to take you a little while. You'll be scraping for another 5 to 10 minutes extra as we go through the morning hours frost all over those metal objects as we are looking at mainly starry skies for a change so we've finally cleared out some of those clouds from the past few days and we can say goodbye to january and hello to february and more in the way of sunshine as we have weak high pressure that is building in right now and starting to clear out the coast so that's certainly nice to see and more of that high pressure extending farther back to the west providing quiet weather there is a cold front however across southern canada and that cold front heads our way tomorrow and that will trigger some showers and then bring in some cooler weather for the weekend but drier weather with sunshine we're in the mid to upper 20s right now from salisbury to georgetown and milton mid 30s indian river inlet so not as cold along the coast but still chilly and really not too much wind to speak of that's why it's so frosty out there it feels like temperatures pretty much the same as the actual temperature so we're breaking that freezing mark around 8 to 9 a.m 9 30 we're in the upper 30s i think we could see a few more clouds than we're seeing on futurecast and by noon, mid 40s, and then hey, look at this into the low 50s as we go into the mid afternoon time period. So, really, not all that bad. A few more clouds this evening. Those clouds thicken up overnight with that next cold front that is moving through. I think the clouds keep our temperatures a little milder into the morning hours. And with that front, we'll see a few showers from time to time tomorrow. And the winds pick up in the afternoon out of the northwest with highs into the 40s and then falling into the evening hours as that cold air starts to move in so we'll see the showers moving away but it will be pretty chilly saturday but the good news is we'll see a lot of sunshine as high pressure builds in so clear skies there and those clear skies continue into sunday as well so we put back to back weekend days together that are pretty nice we have clouds to the south with the storm to the south that will miss us so we're keeping it pretty good weather wise paul davis seven day forecast 51 today mix of sun and clouds a few showers friday and 49 with that cold front and then sunshine this weekend 45 Saturday, 49 Sunday, and then pretty quiet into early next week. Temperatures in the 40s. Susan Oshman from Lewis is our umbrella winner today. Congratulations, Susan, on your brand new umbrella from Paul Davis and Coast TV. Well, later this month, the Delaware Center for the Inland Bays is holding a session for their winter lecture series. This one is titled Get Hooked, Exploring Fishes. In Delaware's estuaries, it features Dr. Aaron Carlisle and fishing expert Clark Evans. They'll discuss the importance of sharks and recreational fishing in Delaware. The event is available both in person and at the University of Delaware and online via Zoom. Seats are limited for this February 22nd lecture. Well, here's an update for Delawareans working with chickens and other birds. The Delaware Department of Agriculture says it's important to clean and sanitize your hands, shoes, and equipment to stop a bird flu called avian influenza. Remember to wash your hands before and after touching birds. Clean all bird cages and tools with special cleaners and wash your cars and trailers if you've been near other birds. This will help to stop the flu from spreading and also it will keep the birds safe. The Maryland Coastal Bays program is trying to stop erosion from slowly taking over the Ocean Pines Yacht Club. And their plan is to rebuild the land by using natural materials and marsh grasses. Program says this method will restore the peninsula in a safe way for all sea life and shorebirds. Steve Hannon, the president of the board of directors in Pines Point Marina says this project would be a big help for the community. It's going to protect all this area back here, plus the marina around here, as well as uh, Pines, uh, yeah, Ocean Pines, uh, marina as well. And the Maryland Coastal Base Program has applied for funding has not received word yet if that money will be approved. Maryland State Police's triumph and an annual assessment coming up understand their commitment to best practices in law enforcement including excellence in handling internal complaints and diversity. Also a golden opportunity in Sussex County unveiling the potential career path at today's job fair in Georgetown. Get the details to jumpstart your future. The game you know and love, deal or no deal, is back. But this time, it's deal or no deal island. Hidden throughout this island are cases worth millions of dollars. 
They don't bite. That hard. Let's go! You can trust me. Keep your friends close. Enemies closer. People are gonna throw their friends under the bus. Deal or no deal? Deal or no deal out on February 26th on NBC and Peacock. NBC Nightly News. Weeknights at 6.30 on Coast TV. See the beauty of Delmarva from a bird's eye view soaring over the shore. Mondays on Coast TV News at 6. Brought to you by Morse Roofing and Siding. Middays with me, April Brilliant. It's a feel-good show on your radio. April is the easiest way to get through your workday. She can play your favorite song. She can help you find your furry friend. The easiest way to get through your workday is with April. She really makes you feel special. Hey friends, hang out with me weekdays here on Coast Country 1039 and 1063 each day from 10 to 3. Our Up and Coming Designer Series is back and we're going bigger, brighter, and bolder than ever before because fashion in 2024 is all about more. And on the next Cameron Hall, the wow factor is at 10 for this Up and Coming Designer's fashion. She says fashion helped her face her biggest fears and we catch up with our friend, Frankie Grande. <laughs> next Cameron Hall. Thursday at 3 on Coast TV. this competition between the judges. Let's see what your mentoring has done. I actually got quite emotional. Can you just shut up? AGT Fantasy League, Monday on NBC and Peacock. Let's dance the night away. Jolly good show! It's always a party atmosphere at Wheel. Thursday at 7 on Coast TV. Well, happening today, Sussex County will host a job fair event. It is seeking potential new hires. This job fair will be held at the county administrative offices in downtown Georgetown, and it'll run from 3 to 7 p.m. Maryland State Police announced their success in the annual Kalea assessment. The assessment highlighted State Police's commitment to best practices in law enforcement. The department also excelled in areas like internal complaints, and handling, and diversity. This assessment confirms what they say their high standards in key operations and administrative areas. A quick update from Laurel Police. Tracy DeShields previously sought was caught on January 25th, and now police say they are looking for 28-year-old Isaiah Bowden from Dover. This is involving an incident at Wexford Village Apartments on January 29th. Bowden faces several charges, including assault and theft. So if you know where he is, you're asked to call the Laurel Police Department. All right, we're going to bring back first alert meteorologist Bob Trahi. Bob, you mentioned earlier more sun today. I take that as less clouds. How about that? <laughs> yes, that is true. Now, I don't think it's going to be no clouds, Matt, but I think there will be some clouds mixed in there. But it'll be nice to see the sun. Welcome, February. Here's your beach forecast. Fenwick Island, Ocean City. Frosty early on today. Then we're into the mid to upper 40s by noon and even mid 40s by 5. Still light at that time with mostly sunny skies and a pretty decent Ferry ride from Lewis to Cape May. We're looking at cold conditions early on, so bundle up. Mid to upper 40s later on, and similar conditions for Rehoboth Beach. Some showers for Friday, but looking much better for the weekend. More forecast details in about three minutes. Lawsuit update: uh, Nye Harmon refiles her case against Sussex Central's high school leaders inside the ongoing legal battle and its implications for students and staff. Also, get the latest on the Millsboro Bypass Project. Officials from Dulldat will shed light on its progress and what it means in the future for your commute. Elevate your business and engage more customers with Draper Media. Our diverse network of media properties such as WBOC, Coast TV, 93.5 The Beach, and 1025 WBOC 
reaches over a half a million Delmarva residents across various channels like television, radio, social media, and digital platforms. Enhance your brand's visibility across the Delmarva region with Draper Media. Our passionate team of media specialists and content creators are dedicated to showcasing your brand through engaging commercials, dynamic drone footage, eye-catching graphic and web design, and social media branding. Share your brand story on our popular programs, capturing the attention of your target audience. Trust your brand with Draper Media, a family-oriented company serving the Delmarva community. Contact Frank Hamilton today at fhamilton at wboc.com to get started. Jesse L. Martin is back. Why crash a plane and let a passenger survive? That's why you're here. Why kidnap someone who couldn't afford the ransom? Poison. Why get fancy with polonium when you can shoot the target in the head? I hear people are irrational. People do inexplicable things. Why? Science. So this is just a theory. Gravity was just a theory at one point. The Irrational, Monday on NBC and Peacock. Hey, this is amazing! It is! It's always a party atmosphere. Yeah. When you come to Wheel of Fortune... Let's dance the night away. Jolly good show! Thursday at 7 on Coast TV. The finals of our Champions Wild Card. One of them will be headed to the Tournament of Champions. Do you have TOC plans? Stay as far away from Ray Lalonde as possible. I love him. I think now I just made it awkward. Thursday at 7.30 on Coast TV. This is Coast TV News Today. February 1st, 2024. Good morning, everybody. I'm Matt Pensick, and it is 5.31 a.m. And we're going to take a live look now into Salisbury. And first alert meteorologist Bob Try. He's back with us again as we make our way on this Thursday morning, Bob. Morning, Matt. We could actually do some stargazing this morning for a change as we cleared out some of the clouds. But with the clearer skies, we've got some frost out there. Frosty temperatures below freezing. 20s from Salisbury up into Georgetown and Milton. 28 in Milford right now. Low to mid 30s along the coast from Rehoboth down into Bethany Beach. And the winds are light, a little stronger along the coast, but not really looking at much of a wind chill this morning as our clouds and radar showing mostly clear skies. We have weak high pressure building in, and that's pushing that storm that we had yesterday in clouds offshore. So we're looking at a better day. It's 10 miles visibility most locations, but do watch out for areas of patchy fog. Temperatures near freezing early on, close to 40 by 9. I think we could see a few more clouds by the noon hour, but a lot of sunshine mid 40s. And then we're right around 50 in Millsboro, Delmar, Georgetown, Milton, Lewis. So a good looking afternoon and maybe a few more clouds into the evening. Today's checklist don't need the umbrella. You need the winter coat, hat, and gloves, and the ice scraper. You'll be scraping for a little while. Make sure you have a hot cup of coffee or hot chocolate on the way to work or school and grab the sunglasses as well. All right, thanks, Bob. Well, people are mad. Their yards are flooding and they feel like no one is listening to their complaints. Coast TV News reporter Charles Reiner was in the Kindleton neighborhood in Lewis and those who live there are saying enough is enough. Some leftover water from this week's rain is still draining in the Kindleton neighborhood. And some of that water is sticking around in Frank Partica's lawn. I mean, I understand that flat land, yeah, water's going to pool up and all wherever, and then it's going to percolate into the ground. But this water stays, for, it's still there. It, it won't go away. Partica says the water is a big hassle in his yard, and he sees it in other yards too. Since we've had the, the rain the last couple of weeks, um, it's actually coming out of the wetlands area and onto my neighbor's two properties as well. And it's created sort of kind of like its own little pond there now. And um, nobody seems to care about it and, and wants to do anything with it. That's raising concerns for everything from mosquitoes to bacteria. He says he's reached out multiple times to Lennar, the managers of the development, but nothing has been done to fix the problem. When Coast TV reached out to Lennar, the company said in a statement, quote, Historic rainfall has saturated the ground across Sussex County, including the wetlands near some homes in Kendleton. Unfortunately, in this case, historic runoff combined with watering has exacerbated the issue. Lennar has cautioned homeowners against overwatering, and multiple independent agencies have inspected the area and provided similar guidance, end quote. But Partica does lay some blame on Lennar. If it was properly graded, you wouldn't have these problems behind your property. Um, 
like that. With no help coming and water still pooling, Partica just hopes he can keep his head and home above water. It's kind of it's kind of depressing and upsetting. We moved to Delaware to retire and you know nothing's being done to correct the the situation. Until that happens, these yards will remain wet, soggy and saturated. With homeowners just hoping that the tides will turn. No matter what the outcome of this topic is, people I spoke with in the neighborhood today said that they just want this issue to be resolved. I'm Charles Reinhardt and Lewis, Coast TV News. An update on a story we first brought to you on Wednesday. Maryland lawmakers introduced House Bill 47, and it's called the Fairness in Girls Sports Act. What it would do, it would ban transgendered athletes from participating in girls' high school sports. Lower Shore State Senator Mary Beth Carrozza, the Republican, co-filed the bill in that chamber. Three separate categories, boys, girls, and co-educational or mixed teams would be created. The bill did pass its first reading in the House been sent to the Ways and Means Committee, and if ultimately approved and signed into law, it would take effect on July 1st. An update on a story that we've been covering for nearly a year. The student at the center of a lawsuit against Sussex Central High School and its leaders has plans to refile her case. Earlier this week, the Delaware Superior Court granted a motion to dismiss the lawsuit, saying the district and school were not responsible for the actions of the administrators Anaya Harmon was suing for. So let's clarify, her lawsuit still stands against the former principal and assistant principal. And in a statement, Harmon's attorney tells Coast TV News, quote, Ms. Harmon and her family are anxiously awaiting a decision on criminal charges against Bradley Layfield and Matt Jones for their outrageous behavior towards this student, end quote. New today, an update on the Millsboro Bypass. Officials from DelDot will be at the town's library in Georgetown and next Wednesday to answer questions about the progress of the road work. Ground was broken last April for the long awaited construction to create a two lane road between 113 and Route 24. Construction is expected to be completed sometime in 2025. Well, now the Democrat has announced a run for Delaware's District 14 House seat. Claire Snyder is a former executive director of the liberal advocacy group Common Cause Delaware. The district covers Rehoboth Beach, Lewis, and Dewey Beach, and is currently held by fellow Democrat Pete Schwarzkopf, who last year announced he was retiring. The commissioner of the Delaware Human and Civil Rights Commission, Marty Rendon, also running on the Democrat side. Primary in the state is scheduled for September 10th. U.S. officials report Iran is worried about re recent actions of its allied groups in the Middle East. These groups supported by Iran have attacked U.S. forces more than 100 times recently. This all happening after President Biden made several demands to Iran, simply stating, don't. Well, there's talk that Iran might now try to avoid further actions that could lead to a big conflict in, with the U.S. Change is partly because of concerns about upsetting the world economy and damaging relationships with important countries like China and India. President Biden, after attending the National Prayer Breakfast in Washington, D.C. and a political event in Detroit, will fly to Delaware tonight. And tomorrow in Dover, the president will pay his respects to the fallen U.S. service members who tragically lost their lives in Jordan. He's already reached out to their families in a gesture of compassion and support. A Senate bill that could reshape college admissions in Maryland. Discover how top students might benefit and what it means for Salisbury University and the University of Maryland Eastern Shore. Also, a handle open conference clash in wrestling. We got highlights from Del Mar against Laurel. Stay with us on Coast TV News today. You're safe now, and I'm not going anywhere. He missed something on that case. You going after a detective? This is more important than our relationship with the police. I want to report a rape. You get through this. I'm the rapist. I'm gonna find your son. If that boy dies, I'll personally make sure that you never see the light of day. Law and Order Thursday, tonight on NBC and Peacock. Get ready to soar with the Hawks. Delmarva Sports Network is your exclusive home for UMES Hawks basketball. From the first whistle to the final buzzer, DSN will take you courtside. Experience the excitement of both the men's and women's teams with every dribble, steal, and three-pointer. To see the schedule or watch the games, go to delmarvasportsnetwork.com or download the DSN app. 
Join us all season long only on the Delmarva Sports Network, your exclusive home for UMES Hawks basketball. Weather shapes our lives. At Coast TV, our first alert weather team is always at work, ensuring you have the information you need. So we're looking forward to begin to make its way towards Fenwick Island pretty quickly here. Because we know how much weather matters to our coastal community. Make sure you take cover from these storms. Our promise is to guide, inform, and protect. Make sure you are remaining weather aware tomorrow. Weather coverage that prioritizes you. Coast TV and the First Alert Weather Team. Your safety, our commitment. Deal or no deal. Welcome to Deal or No Deal Island. It's a whole new game with a lot more money. Now go get those cases. More adventure. Anyone afraid of heights? Wait, 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 what? More risk. Don't worry, they don't bite. That hard. Same question. Deal or no deal? Deal or No Deal Island, February 26th on NBC and Peacock. It is 540 on this frosty start to February. Tidal Health Cam in Salisbury. Yeah, we're looking at some frost, but the roads are pretty quiet and limited visibility in some patchy fog, but right now you're at 29, 28 in Georgetown. So we've got 20s inland and 30s along the coast. So plenty cold enough for the frost. Winds are light right now and skies are mostly clear, but do watch out for that patchy fog as we're seeing the clouds from yesterday continuing to press offshore and we're seeing high pressure building in. So we've got the patchy frost. I gave it the yellow light this morning for the morning commute, so maybe leave a little extra time to get to work or school. Otherwise, pretty cold. And then this afternoon, more in the way of sunshine. It's great to have February here looking at the green light and temperatures in the 40s and lower 50s. All right, Bob, thanks for that. We got movie news now with a pair of previews and also an update on the Michael Jackson movie. Here's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. We're losing the war. Hitler is not playing by the rules. So neither are we. If I'm to do this, I'll need my own team. You won't like them. They're all... No! Mad. They'll need to be. Henry Cavill and company get unconventional in The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. The Guy Ritchie action comedy is based on the true story of the first ever Special Forces unit. The movie invades theaters April 19th. Oh my God, he's amazing. He Michael Jackson's on-screen family is filling out. Nia Long has been cast as his mother Catherine in the musical biopic Michael. Oscar nominee Coleman Domingo is set to play Michael's father, Joe, and Michael's own nephew, Jafar Jackson, takes the title role in the film, which is in production. I'm Callie. Jacqueline. But You're not Greek. No, um, American. When it's all over, you might Where are you from? Liberia. Cynthia Erivo stars in Drift as a war refugee who winds up broke and alone on a Greek island. She forms a friendship with an aimless tour guide played by Elia Shawcott as each finds resilience in the other. Drift opens in New York February 9th, in L.A. February 16th, and begins expanding nationally on February 23rd. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. In sports, it was a conference dual match between Del Mar and Laurel in high school wrestling. And the Delmarva Sports Network's Michelle Roberts brings us to the action. The Delmarva Sports Network from the Wawa Studios. Good morning. A hem open clash in wrestling last night. The two and three Delmar Wildcats taking on the Laurel Bulldogs that have won three dual meets in a row. To the 132 pound division, Dominic Adkins of Delmar is up four to three, but somehow, Kean Littleton of Laurel escapes and gets the two points at the horn to take the match five to four. What a great start for the Laurel Bulldogs. Moving to the 144 division now, Delmar's Quinn Farr battling Landon Messick of Laurel until the very end. Eventually, Messick is able to come away with the pin, getting Farr's shoulders down and keeping the momentum in Laurel's favor with back-to-back -back victories. Moving on now to the 150 pound division, Wildcat Teddy Egolf taking on Bulldog Stanley Pete. Despite having to get doctored up, Pete pushing through that injury and getting a pin over Egolf. The Bulldogs with the two straight pins and they want to keep that momentum going on the mat. On to the 157 pound division. Delmar's Cody West facing Xavier Limehouse of Laurel. West is up 9-1 going into the third period, but West 
staying aggressive throughout this matchup, and he gets the pin and gets Delmar on the board, getting the home crowd cheering on their feet on senior night for the Wildcats. To the 190 division, up next, first period, Bryce Johnson of Delmar comes out of the gate showing strength and power, getting Laurel's Michael Urima down and a pin within seconds as Laurel goes on to win it 36 to 28. That'll do for sports. Have a great day. Still ahead, a Senate bill that could reshape college admissions in Maryland to discover how top students might benefit and what it could mean for Salisbury University and the University of Maryland Eastern Shore. And it's a frosty morning with starry skies across Del Marva. Irish eyes cam 29 in Lewis. It is a cold one, but we'll see sunshine today warms us up a little bit. The weekend is looking pretty good and a few showers for Friday with a cold front. I'll have the details coming up after the break. Today on Coast Life, discover the Southern Delaware's Choral Celebration of Black History Month with diverse choral music. Also, Heart Mumps Healthy Heart Tips and a Wedding Phone Emergency in Spill the Tea. Today at 4 on Coast TV. Coming up this week on the Delmarva Home Show. We're touring a townhome in Rehoboth Beach. This home features granite countertops and a pond view. We're also checking out a condo at the Key in Ocean City. This home includes tile floors, granite countertops, and is the perfect vacation home or rental investment. You can watch the Delmarva Home Show on Sundays at 11.30 a.m. on WBOC. The game you know and love, Deal or No Deal, is back. But this time, it's Deal or No Deal Island. Hidden throughout this island are cases worth millions of dollars. They don't bite Aye. that hard. Let's go! You can trust me. Keep your friends close. Enemies closer. People are going to throw their friends under the bus. Deal or no deal? Deal or no deal live on February 26th on NBC and Peacock. Solo Cup Saturday night. It's an alternative country party with me, Jared. Brought to you by Midshore Recyclers Incorporated. Saturdays at 7 on Coast Country, 103.9 and 106.3. The black community has always carried the power of storytelling. From the prolific musicians of West Africa, to courageous activists and leaders, to fearless digital creators. Join us as we discover and evolve our stories. Discover black heritage. All right, 547 on this Thursday morning, and we are showing you a live look at Ocean City. And, Bob, we're looking to tick up a few degrees warmer today compared to yesterday. We are, Matt, and it's all about the sunshine as well. You know, we ended the month of January so dreary with all those clouds, but now we have a chance to clear it out today, so that will be nice. And with a few more degrees added to the high temperature, even nicer. Make sure you scan the QR code right here. Get your phone in camera mode and download the Coast TV weather app. You can track the weather hour by hour. Interactive radar, lots of interesting tools on there. Average high now 46 to start the month of February 51 the high today that's nice but then we're back to 49 on Friday with the cold front swinging through now it'll be a sunny weekend but it's going to be chilly high of only 45 Saturday 49 Sunday and then back into the mid 40s on Monday so temperatures pretty close to average the first few days of February and it's frosty this morning 26 in Delmar Salisbury 29 for you Greenwood 27 and low to mid 30s along the coast and with weak high pressure in place winds are calm so so the feels like temperature pretty much mirrors the actual temperature feeling like 20s and 30s. So bundle up out the door. Make sure you have the hat and gloves as we are looking at the stars this morning. Mainly clear skies for a change as we're seeing the clouds and storminess moving offshore. We've got weak high pressure that's building in more of that high pressure back into the Tennessee Valley. We're also watching a cold front across southern Canada. That's the front that will drop in tomorrow and give us a better chance of showers. But this morning we're still around freezing 
freezing early on and then above that freezing mark mid morning close to 40 degrees. I think we'll see a few clouds by noon into the mid 40s and then we're topping out in the low 50s all across inland Delmarva and 40s along the coast. Maybe a few more clouds as we go into this evening and then through the overnight as that cold front gets closer, we'll see the clouds increasing and temperatures a little warmer by tomorrow morning into the low 40s and with that front, I think we'll see some sporadic showers as we go through the morning into the afternoon. Then behind that front, winds start to pick up from the northwest and temperatures drop through the 40s. So colder behind that front, but drier as that system moves away Saturday morning into the afternoon. Lots of sunshine, but it will be chilly. We keep it clear Saturday night and then into Sunday. We also keep it clear. We have clouds to the south because there'll be a bigger storm for the southeast, but for us, we're keeping it dry. Paul Davis, seven day forecast 51 today with a mix of sun and clouds 49 Friday with some of those showers and then sunshine icons back to back Saturday and Sunday 45 Saturday 49 on Sunday and then we keep it dry early to middle part of next week as we watch that storm scoot to our south highs in the 40s. All right, Maryland Attorney General Anthony Brown has joined forces with 23 other attorneys general in a legal battle to protect medication abortion access. The uh, coalition filed an amicus brief in the U.S. Supreme Court on Wednesday. It's challenging the Fifth Circuit Court's ruling that reinstated res restrictions on the abortion pill. The Prostone, the group argues these restrictions ignore decades of evidence proving the drug's safety and effectiveness. And Brown emphasizes the need for safe and accessible reproductive choices in making this statement. Keeping on the topic of Maryland, a new Senate bill in Annapolis could change college admissions. If passed, the bill will require state colleges, that would include Salisbury University and the University of Maryland Eastern Shore, to admit students who are in the top 10% of their high school class. Comes in the wake of the Supreme Court's decision on affirmative action. The bill could lead to increased admissions. It's currently under Senate review and could become a law by July 2024. Dover police arrested three people, Antonio Guacara, William Friends, and Samir Dover, following a firearms investigation at Bally's Hotel and Casino. According to the department officers conducting the investigation, they seized three concealed handguns and marijuana. Searches connected to this case also uncovered a number of gun parts. And police say uh, two of those are being held on bail while Friends has been released. Dover Police continues to investigate this case. Well, some simple tricks to help you put down your phone. Coming up, the story next on Coast TV News Today. And looking pretty quiet right now in the Hershey Exteriors. Cam 34 in Ocean City Inland. We are scraping frost and it's a quiet start to February. No major storms on the horizon and temperatures pretty close to normal. I'll have your 10 day forecast coming up after the break. Their hands have always been there for you. A calming, reassuring presence, protecting, nurturing, guiding you. They've helped you find your own strength. Now you find that your hands are the ones supporting and working to ensure they are safe. That can often be challenging or even strain your relationship. With help from Commonwealth Senior Living at the Eastern Shore, you and your loved one can return focus to your relationship as parent and child, improving the lives of seniors, their families, and each other. That's the Commonwealth difference. See the beauty of Delmarva from a bird's eye view soaring over the shore. Mondays on Coach TV News at 6. Brought to you by Morse Roofing and Siding. My team is going to crush you. That was fantastic! I'm so jealous! For once, there's competition between the judges. Yeah. Let's see what your mentoring has done. I actually got quite emotional. Can you just shut up? AGT Fantasy League, Monday on NBC and Peacock. Hey, this is amazing. It is. <laughs> it's always a party atmosphere. Oh, yeah. When you come to Wheel of Fortune. Let's dance the night away. Jolly good show. Thursday at 7 on Coast TV. The finals of our Champions Wild Card. One of them will be headed to the Tournament of Champions. Do you have TOC plans? Stay as far away from Ray Lalonde as possible. I love him. I think now I just made it awkward. Thursday at 7.30 on Coast TV. 
our up and coming designer series is back and we're going bigger, brighter, and bolder than ever before because fashion in 2024 is all about more. And on the next Tamron Hall, the wow factor is at 10 for this up and coming designer's fashion. She says fashion helped her face her biggest fears and we catch up with our friend, Frankie Grande. <laughs> next Tamron Hall. Thursday at three on Coast TV. Next extra, Larry David closing the final chapter on his amazing second act. I do think it's a pretty funny season. How he's saying goodbye in classic Larry fashion. And all the star cameos, next extra. Today at 11.30 on Coast TV. Take your favorite radio station with you wherever you go. Download free today. The average American spends four hours, 25 minutes on their phone each day. Spending less screen time isn't easy. But it can be done. Reporter Alexa Lorenzo tells us how. How often do you look at your phone throughout the day? And I'm feeling guilty for saying this, but you know what? I probably, at the end of the day, have spent probably four or five hours at okay. s some point out of the day. Mm -hmm. It depends on what I'm doing. I'm sitting in the average, probably like two or three. Maybe about five. A recent survey from reviews.org found Americans check their phones an average of 144 times a day. And every time you take a peek, you become distracted. Research shows it takes an average of 23 minutes to bounce back awesome. from a distraction. Plus, excessive screen time has been linked to sedentary behavior, eye strain, depression, anxiety, and social isolation. If you want to spend less time on your phone, try turning off all notifications except those for calls or texts. Also, set your phone to do not disturb during times when you want to use it less and try removing emails from your phone. This will ensure that you can carve out specific time on your desktop or laptop for responding to messages and less time checking your phone. Apps such as Forest, Opal and Clearspace can help you stay focused and eliminate distractions by offering rewards. With ways to keep you off your phone hey, and more present, you I'm Alexa Lorenzo reporting. Another trick when you are tempted to use your phone is habit swapping. That means picking another activity, such as walking, listening to music, or reading a book. That will give you the same kind of pleasure, according to the experts there. Well, the FDA is, has a warning about an unapproved copycat eye drops. According to the FDA, South Moon and Rebrite should not be purchased or used. Officials say these products lack an active ingredient used in approved eye drops. And in addition to that, testing of South Moon samples came up positive for a bacteria that can cause eye infections. So far, no word where these products came from, and an investigation is now underway. 5.56 a.m., and we're going to go to Bob again. Bob, we talked about things being a bit warmer, but it, it is still cold for this part of the morning. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. You know, we're still in somewhat the dead of winter, Matt, and it's still very chilly out there. Average highs are still in the mid 40s and we'll be close to that today, actually exceeding it, I believe. Now it's frosty this morning. Upper 20s will be scraping that frost. We're looking at the sunshine today, warming into the 40s to right around 50 with sunshine. That's nice. Your Paul Davis 10 day forecast Friday. We have a cold front with a few showers possible and 49 looking much better for the weekend. 45 Saturday, 49 Sunday. Sunday. We'll see a storm move to our south early next week. Keeps us high and dry with 40s and then warming up towards the end of the week. All right, thanks, Bob. And coming up on our next hour, more cash needed at Cape. That is the claim from school district officials. We'll tell you about a referendum set for next month. All that and more as we continue on Coast TV News today.